Hey guys, welcome to Line Q&A with Coach Linny and L.A. Ray. Uh, Coach Ray, a.k.a. Coach Coach, joining us here. <laughs> New little bit we put together. Um, you ready to roll? Let's answer some questions, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it, man. You know, excited, excited to hear about the questions that line coaches have. You know, that's what it's all about. Us all working together to get better. That's right. Coaches and players, uh, welcome to submit questions. At the end of the video, we'll give you guys the method to do so. Uh, but for now, we want to get right into it. So the first question we have um, comes from a bit of a situation where Coach Ray, uh, you had posted a video uh, with the, the line lab. This is kind of a collaboration, line pro in the lab. Uh, and you'd post it on a, on a lineman uh, Facebook group chat. Um, so let me pull that up here, and you can kind of uh, explain what you were trying to highlight here. Perfect. So this this look this is a this is a base deuce block, you know. And uh, of course, it, it looks beautiful. You want to get a tight double team with two guys. Uh, the number one thing, the guard got to get his feet in the ground. You see, he takes a slight trigger step, pick it up, put it down, and get that second step down so I can set up that double team for my tackle. The tackle's aiming point on this is hip. We want to bang that hip. You know, I always teach our guys to aim for the hip. Most guys are strong, bigger, stronger in that upper body, helmet, shoulder pad area, arm area. So, that, you know, the higher you hit, that's when you get stalemates and different things like that. So I tell our guys, you know, you hit that hip, anybody's moving. So this double team should be going to the backside linebacker, which is 40 in this picture. They, they ended up, they end up, killing the three techniques so bad that uh, the tackle trips over them. But, uh, you know, what I wanted to showcase is just that that hip to hip movement right there. And just, uh, you know, two guys working on a combo. Beautiful for a gaps gap system. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a very common block at all levels. Uh, you know, we get these double teams and we could spend a whole segment going into the differences between double teams. You know, these are the type of things we want to bring you guys. But in this specific instance, you know, a coach spoke up in the comments and was asking, you know, hey, we've messed around with not double teaming in these type of situations. Uh, these type of situations being more on the gap side of things where the ball is going directly to the gap out here. And uh, they're wanting to take these two defenders to the right. So the question was, you know, when and why would we consider having the guard go directly to that linebacker? Because you can see he's got a clear path he could get through this gap and go take care of that linebacker himself. And this tackle would then be by himself down on this three technique, uh, which some people would call a man blocking scheme uh, or taking it man on man, um, which does happen. Right. So, you know, just off the bat with that question, you know, when, why uh, thoughts on, on double teaming versus not double teaming coach. Man, just a, uh... I mean, I'm a huge component in, in the double team, especially on, on power. You know, it's this big boy ball. You know, I like having our guys, you know, just confident enough to run off the ball. But to answer that question, uh, you know, I like it. But in certain circumstances, I think it's a lot of factors that have come into play. One is let's uh, let's look at the, the defensive line is in a three technique right now. So, you know, we got the angles right now. My guard, he's taking the trigger step with that right foot first to protect that play side a gap just in case we get any movement or 55 wants to blitz, I can come off and snatch off and protect inside out like that. But uh, I think it depends on, you know, personnel. One, is it how much you trust that tackle, you know, getting that down block on that angle, what type of player that three technique is, what type of defense are you going against? Are you going against a penetrating, attacking, four down defense, or are they more of a catch read? type team you know what i'm saying so i think it's i think it's a lot more game planning and different things that comes into that i'm always going to be a component for the deuce block i think uh in one one instance where just solo blocking it down in it you know man blocking it as if that guy was in a four eye if he was in the inside eye of that left tackle i think we could down block it then but still you know the primary reason for you know going through everything in terms of the of the double team, we want to make that path clear for our guard. We got a skip pull from the backside guard right there, and you want to make that path clear for him. So you know, if we if we man block this scheme here, and we going against a penetrate defense, you know, I, I'm thinking a la Aaron Donald, you know, and Dominic and Sue, you know, uh, dominating three techniques like that, they're gonna blow that play up, take our puller out the play, and the, the ball your ball carry get hits in the backfield. So it's just a, I think it's it's a it's something you can game plan. You know, I talked to the coach, you know, he he posted it. And that's what I, I want to see, you know, his video where he he showed the technique that he taught. Because I, I think I, I like it, you know, but I think that, um, 
because it's something different. And of course, you know, different ways to run a gap scheme. And, you know, this is probably one of the oldest plays in football history that, that isn't going anywhere, but I'm, I'm a huge proponent for the, uh, for the deuce block. I'd rather double team that guy. Cause just, just how talented three techniques are. And, you know, so I think a, a lot of it depends on, uh, you know, how confident are you in personnel as well as uh, what the defense is doing. Yeah. Coach, I think um, if you, if you surveyed, you know, college and professional coaches, um, and, and many high, you know, high level high school coaches, they're always going to O line coaches at least are always going to want that double team, uh, especially when the play is coming downhill close to that block. You know, if the play is going wider, like a horn play, uh, you know, pin and pull, you'll see more one on one down blocks because we're getting a little further distance away from that block. But when you're dealing with a, a tough three technique, it, obviously college in the NFL, you can always count on him being good at coming off those down blocks. It's just too insecure. Uh, but at a lower level, you know, like wing T teams might consider not double teaming here um, because it's going to make it more simple for those young linemen. Double teams are really hard to get and they're really intricate. It's not just getting together hip to hip. You have to understand who should come off, who we need to look for. Uh, but when you come up and you've got third graders, fourth graders, fifth graders, you know, if they can just have that job and know which direction they're going and they can get right to that linebacker and get on them, uh, there's a lot of benefit there because you're having fast hitting plays. The other thing is nice at that level is if that guard down blocks right away, it can influence that three technique to come his way and the tackle can have a really easy time washing him down. So, you know, one of the problems that these youth coaches run into is, and even high school coaches is that they're not getting off the double team to get off to that linebacker. So there is, there's a much bigger level of needing to understand what's happening and work it. Uh, but the very best thing I think a guy could do, especially power counter coming down that C gap, B gap, is to have the double team installed and then to have the man call be a checkoff for if there's a threatening linebacker position, if there's anybody in that A gap, then that guard needs to be aware and be able to come off. And then that, in that case, it will turn into a one-on-one -on -one for the tackle. So I think having both installed and then being able to check down to a man is ideal. But if you're lower than sixth grade, seventh grade, you can consider going man on blocking and just making sure that running back's getting there fast and hitting it hard. And once in a while, he's going to run into a problem. But uh, but it is one way to go to be more secure. Definitely. I definitely I agree with everything you just said. Solid. So we have a second question. Uh, this one is going to be related to the stance and really just in general technique of, of playing O-line. Uh, but it says, hey, fellas, I'm a new coach. I was always taught toes pointed straight ahead helps keep the hips and shoulders square. I see a lot of guys with outside foot angled out weight on the inside of the foot for power. What's your opinion? Straight up 45 or however a guy might feel comfortable. Uh, well, I guess I'll, I'll take a stab at that first. I think it's one is uh, you can't go really 45. It depends on that guy's ankle flexion, that ankle flexibility, which is huge, which is huge. Being able to bend at the knees and ankles, especially young players, you know, if it's one thing that I that I would have told my younger self earlier in my career, stretch more, stretch every day, stretch, 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 ankle flexibility, hip mobility, just different things like that. It all comes into play as you get older, as you get bigger, as you get strong. It's only going to make you that much more of a dynamic player. You know, the, the game's all about athleticism now. But uh, just to answer that question, I'm huge on that outside foot being out. And it's really not not going against it being straight. I just want the foot flat. I, I feel better when my guys have their full foot on the ground. You know, I feel like they're they're more they're more powerful. They can transition. They can fight that pressure with pressure, especially if you got an attacking defensive lineman that he's soon the ball snap. He's off the ball. You know, he's ready to roll. You got to be able to fight that pressure with pressure. Come underneath, whether run or pass. You know, I, and I think about it. A lot of people have moved to the you know, that outside foot being turned or 45 a little bit for pass pro purposes primarily. But of course, as offensive line coaches and ex offensive linemen, we want our stance to look the same. You know, we want our stance to look the same. We don't want to give away keys. So, you know, anytime that we can get, we can have both feet fully in the ground. You know, they talk about linemen, we're built from the ground up. All our power comes from the ground level. So, you know, having that full foot in the ground is huge. You know, I've, I've seen some guys where they can keep that foot straight, 
and and have the full foot on the ground. That's amazing flexibility, you know, that amazing ankle flexibility, you know, but some guys got to turn it out a little bit. Some guys got to turn it out fully. But, you know, I think a lot of that, you know, comes with the with their ability to bend, which is going to be huge for them, especially if if guys want to want to move up and even younger guys just get into an elite and more consistent level. Yep, I think you nailed it. Uh, I think if you, again, if you took a poll of, uh, of all the NFL and college coaches and players, I think the majority would speak to the benefits of, of being able to turn the foot, especially the outside foot on pass pro and in the stance, but really both feet at, multi, at different times can turn toes out in order to get the weight to the inside of the feet. And it's so crucial for your center of gravity to have that reinforcement inwards uh, to have the knees inside of the ankles, as some coaches say, right? So whether you're run blocking or pass blocking, don't be afraid to let those turn out. And if you're a coach, you know, I would, I would say do some research. Um, obviously look into OLP stuff with the drive catch. You know, they definitely do a good job of explaining that, that toe turning. But I would, I would probably, you know, be so confident to even say that it's becoming the norm. It's becoming the standard and to go to tell a guy he needs to point his toes completely forward to correct a lineman from turning his toes out at all to saying, Hey, keep those toes hundred percent forward with your knees. I would classify that as an old school thought that's, that would be classified as kind of the old way of thinking. Um, and we could go deeper into it on another episode, but whether you're in your stance, pass blocking or stepping on a run block, you got to have the maximum force coming through the maximum part of the foot. And if you're up on the toe at all, it's just not a strong spot for the foot to hit the ground. So solid. Well, good. That's exactly right. If you guys have questions, if there's anything related to coaching, recruiting, playing, uh, if you're a player, if you're a parent, whatever it might be, if there's something related to O lineman or D lineman or being a lineman on the field, off the field or anything in between, you can send us your question. Uh, We have an email address. You can send it to linequestions at gmail.com. We also have a phone number. You got 971-238-4577. You can call and leave a voicemail or you can send a text. And then also we're going to have a link in the the description or the comments of this video uh, that you can go to and submit a question that way. So anything is fair game. We'd love to answer any and all of your questions. Uh, So please submit those. Any final thoughts, coach? No, man, you, you hit the nail on the coffin. Uh, You know, just, uh, Guys, please submit questions. You know, we that's what we created this for. You know, that's what we, we want to collab. You know, we're all, majority of us are at home right now. I know I'm chomping at the bit to get back out there with my guys, but uh, definitely love talking ball, love talking line play. So look forward to it. Awesome. We'll see you guys next time on Line Q&A.